coming to you live on tape from the beautiful Campbell Bell Building on the Square in Fayetteville, Arkansas. It's time for Northwest Arkansas Business Radio. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Adam Robison, and you have landed on another episode of Northwest Arkansas Business Radio Right here on Business Radio X. Thank you so much. I always appreciate when <laughs> I always appreciate when my friend Susanna comes and helps me with some visual aids. And uh, you are on point today as usual. Thanks. Yeah, Susanna. For those of you that don't know her, she's a she's a great friend of mine over from the Rogers Lowell Chamber of Commerce. And Rogers Lowell, man. <laughs> I'm telling you what, yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what's that called? Raise the roof. There you go. I hadn't, I hadn't raised many roofs. I've got some arthritis in my shoulder. No, I'm kidding. I'm not that old yet. But um, there's some W forty for that. I don't know the words. Right, Susanna. How are you? I'm great. Good. Yeah. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. It is Sunday, so you know what that means. Yeah. What's that mean? Eagles Day. Oh, yes. That's all right. I know it might be a little controversial that's to all people. Right. You know, it's it's majorly controversial. But you know what? I had a I had a guest in here two weeks ago that tried to say that the University of Arkansas was just like a the the northern campus of the University of Texas, and that made me go. I was so angry about that. So I can handle the door. Right, right. The door. I mean, we almost killed the podcast at that point. You know what I'm saying? But uh, it turned out to be a good conversation. Mm-hmm. And uh, but but and so I'm just gonna hope that this turns out to be. No, I know it will be. Susanna, you and I go back uh, four or five months. Mm-hmm. Um, I I started networking at the Rogers Lowell Chamber back in February. What did you arrive in April? I arrived at the very end of April. Okay. Um, and then started running the networking event, CRC, okay. or Essential Referral Connections, okay. uh, in May. Great. Well, take that back. Started in April, and then my first week handled the Fateville CRC by myself. Wow. So, yeah, they, they they gave you, like, one week to watch it, and the next week you were up to bat, right? Something like well, that? Well, yeah, I mean, I my thing is you got to sink or swim. Yeah. I'm a sink or swim type of gal. Like, yeah. I'm not going to sit there forever and watch you and... No, I want to get in there, and if I make a mistake, then I learn from it, and yeah. it won't happen again, because I feel like that's the easiest way to learn. Well, it's the, it's the way we all learn, yeah. right? We all got, I mean, especially um, those of us who are business owners, those of us who are leaders within our business, um, most of us got into our position because we decided to take a chance or to just, mm-hmm. just go for it at yeah. some point, right? And, and so, that's a scary thing, too, yeah. is the unknown. Yeah, it's it's crazy scary. So let's talk about what you do at the Rogers Lowell Chamber of Commerce. Uh, what's yeah. your role? And, uh, and then after we learn about what you do there, I'd love to like delve deeper into who you are and what you're about. Well, I hope you have enough time in the world to see. Let me tell you, we can go two parts if we need to. Just kidding. (laughs) Um, So my name is Susanna Silva. Hi. Um, So I am the account executive um, at the Rogers Little Chamber. So what that entails is I'm also over our our, part of our member services team um, in which I'm help do with the membership, sponsorships, um, also networking events. Um, A lot of my job, I am out and about. I am hardly in the office, Um, not because I don't want to be. It's because I'm out there chasing businesses and seeing, oh, there's a new construction business. Let me kind of step in and see who, if the owner might be here. Okay. So I can talk to him really quick. So you guys like share leads. Hey, I heard something was going in here. Like, how does that work? I just drive by. You just drive by. I drive by. So when you see something happening. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yep. Uh, For example, there was a business um, at Promenade and I know that they were opening. So... The, the owner, oddly enough, was doing some construction work outside in his car. And mm-hmm. I mean, I don't, you don't, on Google, they don't tell you, or if you research it, they don't tell you really who the owner is. Right. Um, even on the business listings. Mm-hmm. So if you go on, go online and look at the business listings, the new business license that were pulled, those are from the previous month, not current month. Oh, I didn't know that. So, um, you know, it's just one of those things where I just go in and, um, just walk up to the site and I just say, hey, can I'm just looking for the owner or the manager on site. A lot of the times they're sweaty and they're like, that's me. Oh, yeah. And I'm just like, oh, hi, my name is Susanna Silva. Like, I would love to do your grand open and get you guys more involved with the chamber. And I would love to take some time to talk to you about what we do, our mission work um, and, you know, what we stand for. Mm-hmm. You know, we are very happy that you're here in northwest Arkansas and helping be- like better 
to build community okay. and serving more people. That's super cool. Yeah, now, I providing you, more though. jobs too, which okay. is awesome. Does it ever okay? Because like, so one thing a lot of people probably wouldn't know about me because I know I look. Uh, if you were watching this YouTube feed, you see how masculine and manly I look. But yeah, right. So, but I'm a big chicken, right? And so, if I see a big area of big sweaty, smelly men that are overworking on a business. I don't know. I don't know if I would walk up much less. I mean, you're Why? you're you're much you're much prettier than I am. Oh, stop! I mean, no. so they would probably say something kind to you that I, you know, I'm, I'm, I have a really nice face. I don't like to get hit. Um, I don't know. It just to me, it, it. I so, so long story short, I'm not. I am not an extrovert. I'm very much an introvert. I pretend to be an extrovert. And so walking up to crowds of people that are new in the area and saying, hey, looks like you got some business going on. Why don't we get you involved in the chamber? It's out of my comfort zone. That's all Mm -hmm. I'm saying. And so I thank God for people like you who have the ability to just walk up and be like, what's up, dudes? And Mm -hmm. uh, and see what's happening. Yeah. They're just people at the end of the day. That doesn't. Just like us. Okay. You know, Um, obviously, I feel like I have. It's it's one of those things where I'm, I'm I've never been scared to talk to anyone, mm-hmm. but also I I know how to read the room. I first read the room first, mm, okay, and read their body language, okay. So fun fact, um, I was in nursing school before for two years, and then COVID happened, and then I had a baby. Wow. Um. So then, um, but I learned just I, I think just throughout a lot. Like my mom, she taught me. My mom has a very good sense of of common sense of. Self awareness, mm-hmm. pretty much, mm-hmm. um, in which you read the room, you read the people first. That's the first thing that you do whenever you walk into any type of situation, sure. any type of event. Sure, um, kind of see, you know, just scope it out really fast. Yeah. Not stare at everyone, like you know, but just kind of feel, you know, feel the room a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you know, if they if they seem like they're really busy, or if they're, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. then you can kindly like walk up to them or you're trying to get their attention like hey it's right now a really bad time I'll be more than happy to come back um but also what I've learned is I'm not scared to talk to anyone okay um the worst thing that they can say is no right. and how many times have you been told no mm-hmm. from growing up from mm-hmm. your parents from this some from of that. us more than others I would mm-hmm. imagine right so I mean it's just Okay, that no means try again later. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. You know, it's it's persistency, it's self motivation, it's it's that confidence also. Okay. So you have to be very confident, I feel like, what you are doing mm-hmm. and what your job is. Okay. And you have to really actually love your job in order to perform very well. Oh, and I which agree. I am so thankful that I am with a company and with the chamber that we are literally we are a unit. Yeah. Which is really awesome. And you can tell when you see mm-hmm. you guys working together. Um I'm a member of the Rogers Lowell Chamber. Thank I went you. to the Orient Oh, you're welcome. It, it has a lot to do with you, I'll be honest with you. Um I just I really liked the way that uh uh, especially at the networking events, you seem to regard not only me as an individual, but me as a business owner. Like you have an amazing ability to, and this isn't this isn't much, guys. But I'm just gonna put I'm gonna tell you what mattered to me. Um, you have an amazing ability to remember the previous conversation that you and I had, mm-hmm. and so you asked me about something I was worried about the week mm-hmm. before, right? And so, and, and as as we get out and we network as business owners and marketers and individuals, and uh, if you hear any background noise, um, we have Zoe, who is Susanna's beautiful daughter. And she's having a little snack off camera, um, but I'm hoping she'll come on and show us herself maybe okay. at some point. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. She seems a little shy, but she is getting some food this morning, and that's good. Oh, no, it's totally fine. Single, like, single mom life. Yeah, you know, <laughs> hey, we, we all got we, we to gotta make it, right? Yes, and, you know, it's one of those things, too. It's where I want my daughter also to see what I do for work. Absolutely. And I believe I'm a hardcore believer in that. Yeah. Um, Maybe not all the time or, you know, just whenever it's appropriate yeah. or when I can yeah. just to show her this is what mommy does. Yeah. This is what, you know, this is why I'm gone. This is what we do. Right. And so now she says, mommy just talks to people. Yeah. Mommy loves to talk to people. But how cool, right? Yeah. Because and so, as she grows up, mm-hmm. the only way she's going to reach the dreams that she will have one day is to talk to people. Yes. Right? We, we yeah. can't, it's very rarely that we can accomplish our dreams 
on a universe all by ourselves. I don't know. We can't know just it, be on LinkedIn all the time right. saying, let's connect. Okay, great. And yeah. then you don't connect. Right. You know, right. you have to actually sit down with someone one on one and build that trust, mm-hmm. build that relationship. For, yeah. Like, because if you don't, they're going to be like, you, know, you just want my money and that's it. Right. Well, and that's what I was going to go into before I, I got distracted by Sorry. Zoe being just sweet and wonderful over there is the fact that. You set the example for what us networkers should want to do, right? I think I'm a member of the Rogers Lowell Chamber today because in a very short time, you developed a uh, likable, really, I mean, you're a very likable person. So it was easy to like you. Um, I felt like you knew me because you remembered Mm -hmm. from one conversation to another, and that allowed me to trust you, right? Mm -hmm. And so very quickly, I came to you and said, hey, um, I think I'm ready to join. And, and, and you were very subtle. You weren't, you weren't a, a hard pressure salesperson or anything. And so it just came natural. Um, what kind of partnership? So, so for those, uh, new business owners, small business owners, those of you who have been around for a little while and you're like, you know what? I've thought about joining the chamber. I just never really pulled the trigger on that. Uh, Susanna, what, what is, what is a benefit or what are the benefits of a business that, that sets up or, or walks in partnership with the Rogers Lowell Chamber of Commerce? So first off, I'll say that the Chamber of Commerce, we are not affiliated with anything with like a Harry Potter chamber or anything like that. <laughs> um, or is, is that a thing? <laughs> some people, the younger gens are like, oh, wait, like the Harry Potter chambers? Oh, like, I got you. Like the Chamber of Secrets and the yeah. Chamber. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Um, I missed that movie or all those movies. <laughs> Sorry about that, but I do know what you're talking about. So for fun facts, so for the chamber, we are not in any way affiliated with any of the Harry Potter chambers at all. <laughs> um, we are not affiliated with um, the government or the city or anything like that. We are strictly a nonprofit. We are a 501c3 profit, Okay. Um, which means that our chamber, we really much provide support. We are the small businesses biggest cheerleaders Mm. Um, and we are a five-star accredited chamber Mm -hmm. what does that mean so the um, u.s chamber of commerce they have an accreditation grading skill in which of based on what programs they offer how much of a positive impact they do to the community um, and their members engagement okay and so and also surveys and referrals and so on and so on Um, because that's something that i've heard A lot of people say about Rogers Lowell Chamber, especially when I'm in the hallways and uh, of the place. And when I've been there a few times, uh, we're a five star chamber. We're Mm -hmm. a five star chamber. So that's a really big deal. Right. It is. And we do do a lot. We do a lot with the community. We do a lot with. So we believe that in order for Northwest Arkansas to grow, we are a regional chamber, Mm -hmm. meaning that. Even though your business is in Fayetteville, even though your business is in Springdale, Springfield, um, or any, anywhere in Missouri, uh, Texas, Oklahoma, Bentonville, um, it, just pretty much anywhere, mm-hmm. we will support you a thousand percent mm. just as if you were in Rogers and Lowell. And why? Because we believe that in order for Northwest Arkansas to, we want Northwest Arkansas to be that place where people want to come play, invest, and stay here. Yeah. yeah. And so that's what's really great. You know, we left, we built the community. Yeah. And also offering those resources to small businesses that are like, okay, I got a small business, now what? Yeah. You know, and we have an excellent like workforce program. We really pride ourselves in workforce. Steve Cox is actually the one in charge of that. Uh, we just recently had a job fair um, October 3rd, mm-hmm. and it was it was amazing. It was so good. We had about um, 80, 80 participants, about 80 over, or I'm sorry, 80 participants. Okay, so these are um, people vendors. who've had jobs to... No, so these people are are vendors, sponsors. Like okay, vendors, yeah. okay. So we had about 80 types of vendors. So it was at the Rogers Rec Center. Mm-hmm. So some were different. It used to be at the Frisco Station Mall, but we switched locations. And so now we had about 300 applicants wow. come by. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. Which was fin- which was crazy. And everyone brought their resumes. And it was, we had everyone from he- uh, healthcare, home improvement, um, branding. We had people from, you know, fast foods, also um, like car washes and mm-hmm. all that. Tyson was there also. Mm-hmm. And it's just a really great event. For people to come out and say, hey, you know what? 
I just want to imply a person wow. type yeah. thing. And we host those events twice a year. Nice. Wow. So it's, That's incredible. Yeah, we had a lot of positive feedback from you know, the vendors and from participants yeah. and stuff like that. And, and that's just the cherry on top of the ice cream sundae of, of what you guys are doing. Um, I, 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 I know that we could sit and fill the entire podcast mm-hmm. with that. Um, but I love I love the, the attention and love we've given Rogers Lowell Chamber. But I really want to focus the, the spotlight on you just a little bit mm-hmm. because, um, I mean, there's a reason why you're here right now. It mm-hmm. is Hispanic Heritage Month, yeah. right? Uh, why don't you go ahead and tell our audience a little bit about that mm-hmm. and uh, why that's so important to you? Yes. So Hispanic Heritage Month is a month long. So it starts from September 15th through October 15th. Um, and it celebrates the diversity of all the cultures um, that in Latin America, or I'm, I'm sorry, uh, in the Hispanic community. Okay. So basically with that, so El Salvador, there are um, Mexico, or I'm sorry, El Salvador, there are Hispanic, or I'm sorry, El Salvador, their um, Independence Day is September 15th. Okay. That kicks it off. And then Mexico Independence Day, whoop, whoop. Uh-oh. Um, is, She's sporting her colors. I, <laughs> I always have to. Yeah. <laughs> you have to be proud where you come from. It's beautiful. You know, you should never be you should never be ashamed of where yeah. where you're from. Doesn't matter if you're from Germany from anywhere. Yeah. You know, always represent and be proud of who you are and where you come from. You know, I have I have a story about that mm-hmm. because uh it, it and it's about the Mexican flag, actually. I uh April of two thousand eighteen I went down to Tijuana and mm-hmm. had a gastric sleeve surgery. And we had to fly into San Diego and the clinic dro- the members of the clinic drove up to the San Diego airport, picked us up and drove us across the Mexican border so that we could go and have the surgery. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And I always thought it would be a big deal to go to a different country like I just always thought that well it's just it's just down the road. Like I didn't think there would be such an incredible difference. But I remember that day driving into Mexico. I believe it was uh, like April 26th of, of 2018 because the first thing I saw when we passed the uh, security gates was this ginormous Mexican flag, and it was waving in the wind. It was very majestic looking, and I just thought it was the first time I'd ever looked at a flag other than the American flag and thought, Holy smokes, it's beautiful. Like We it are was... very proud of who, I'm sorry, us as, you know, Mexicans, and I'm not, I'm speaking for myself as personal experience. Um, we're very proud of, you know, and people that I know, we're very proud of who we are. Yeah. Um, and we won't hide it. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things that I feel like now in society, it, it's kind of like, oh, well, I have to act this way or act that way or yeah. else, you know, so-and-so. No, you have to be yourself. Yeah. You know, you have to be yourself in a professional way, Mm -hmm. you know, but also just mentally just know who you are as a person. Because if you start to change that as a person, then you're going to lose not only yourself, but your what you want to do as a career. You're going to be unhappy. Yeah. So let's pivot there. Yeah. Let's learn about Susanna and who you are. Like, where'd you come from? Where were you born and raised? Talk to us about some of the the triumphs and struggles. Sure. Let us get to know you. So I am fourth generation wild, and I still speak fluent Spanish. Wow. Um, my little one Zoe, she is technically fifth gen, um, and she Holy speaks smokes. she speaks fluent Spanish. Really, mm-hmm. that's amazing. And so um, I was born and raised here in Northwest Arkansas at okay. the old St. Mary's Hospital in Rogers, to okay. be exact. Um, and I grew up in Springdale, and Elementary school was, I loved school. I loved just, I loved school pretty much whenever, you know, at that age. So I was in Springdale and I think this was a monumental, like pretty big, a pretty big uh, monumental day whenever I found out that I was Mexican. Mm. So the day I found out I was Mexican. (laughs) (laughs) Um, That may be the name of this podcast (laughs) episode, just so you know. Yeah. Because that would get my attention. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, so it would be the day I found out if I was Mexican. Um, I was in. Here she comes. Oh, here she comes. <laughs> I was wondering how long she would say wait. Hi. You want to say hi? Say hi. Yeah, there Yay. you go. <laughs> I love that. She's Sorry. so sweet. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the day that I found out I was Mexican, I was about, I was in fifth grade. I was in kindergarten. And my mom comes home and I am lathered in white lotion from head to toe, like just lathered. And my mom looks at me. She's like, what the 
what are you doing? Like, what, what the heck? And I said, Mom, I want to be white. And wow. she goes, why? What, what, what? She's, she got, at this point, she started asking a million and one questions. Mm-hmm. And she was like, what? what? And she's like, well, where is all this coming from? And I go, Mom, am I Mexican? Mm. And she goes, yes, you are Mexican. Why? And she goes, and I go, Mom, the little girl in the playground said, I can't play with you because you're Mexican. Gosh. And it was not the first time I've heard that. I heard that many, many times. And so, you know, throughout elementary school, I was always the teacher. I was kind of the teacher's pet. Um, cause I just wanted to be in the classroom. Mm-hmm. I never really wanted to go outside too much or anything like that. Or I felt like because I was, you know, Mexican, I had to overcompensate, you know, overcompensate for that, for right. being a people pleaser, mm-hmm. for do- going, doing things above and beyond, wow. being really nice to the mean girls to try to get them to like me mm-hmm. and, you know, all that stuff. Um, and so from then I have really just, I feel like that has affected my life a lot because yeah. that you know that kind of just lowers your self-esteem a little bit like why why would she say that mm-hmm. um and so moving forward i moved to perry grove and then we moved to fateville in fifth grade um and then after that we moved to perry grove in sixth grade i was only there for two months mm-hmm. because of same thing bully and it was pretty bad. Um, so then my mom was like, we're getting out of here. Let's go to, we're going to go to Fayetteville. Mm-hmm. And so I went to, um, went to Holt Elementary. Awesome school. Loved it. Loved my teachers. Everyone there was really cool. I, I loved them. Yeah. We were already planning to go to Ramey High together and planning our, our lockers and stuff. And then my grandma got sick mm. and um, I had to move to, then we moved to Phoenix. So at the end of, so seventh grade year, I moved to Phoenix. From Arkansas. Mm -hmm. So that's a big move because someone's sick. It was, and I was so mad. Yeah. I was so mad. Did you have other family out there? No. Well, I had my my grandma and my grandpa, but my, um, not my grandpa, um, my grandma and my uncles. So that's where your grandma lived. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got it now. That makes sense. And she was living by herself. I got you. And she would not go into an assisted living. She would not. She refused. She is very, she's very, 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 very stubborn. Yeah. And she's like, I can do this by myself. I don't care if it takes me three days to do it. Yeah. I will do it by myself. And so luckily we have other family there too that would go up and check up on, check up on her periodically and stuff like that. Um, but she was just, she just was getting sick. And so my mom and I decided to just move over there. And whenever I was in Phoenix, at first, I hated it. I was like, oh my gosh, I have no friends here. I started seventh grade. I hate it. Da, 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 da. But mm-hmm. then once I get there, I loved it. Mm-hmm. It was nice. so, yeah. There was the cultural, it's so diverse. Yeah. And I felt I felt kind of right in. Really? Okay. Yeah, a, I've heard that about bit, yeah. Phoenix. Yeah. The food, oh, so good. It's a little hot, but people you get love used it, to right? It. Yeah. You get used to it. Okay. Um, you know, even though it's 115, 120 degrees, it's a dry heat. I know it's people are humidity. like, exactly. Yeah. See, I grew up in California. I mm-hmm. remember 110 in Fresno. Um, even when you went outside, if you went swimming, it was cool, right? You didn't mm-hmm. get out and start swimming immediately again. So this humidity is a beast. It, it's it's horrible. I do not. The humidity and I do not get along. No, anyway. Only the AC and I were like this. Nice. So... Um, but anyways, so moving for moving forward, uh, whenever I was in, in Phoenix, I loved it. Um, and so that was that. And then coming to so in Phoenix, because you live in a bigger city, my mom, you know, she just because growing up in a small town, mm-hmm. you always think that it's safe to just walk to places, oh, yeah. you know, um, eighth grade, I was walking to cheer to cheer practice and cheer practice. My school was only not even a mile away. And I almost got kidnapped. You almost got kidnapped. I almost got kidnapped. Oh my god! Yes. So um, I was walking. It was on the. It was on a main street as well. Yeah. Too. Um. And so I just. Rem- I was walking past a car wash, and there was a white truck that just came by and like would circle. And I. Mm. I took off my my headphones and I just became a little bit more alert. I was like, okay. Yeah. Like you immediately the, felt like something ex- wasn't right. It, it, yeah, okay. exactly. And also I thank my sister for making me listen to all those true crime podcasts and for making me oh, listen to Dateline. Man. So thank you. Um, but I just remember that truck just rolling in twice and I was like, oh gosh, I'm like, I hope nothing bad happens. So then I started walking a little bit faster. 
um, to an intersection where like people can see me and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. And nope, he pulls in, tries to grab me. Wow. And luckily I, so at the time I was, I was bigger. Yeah. So I was about 175 pounds. I threw myself to the floor and kicked him right in the middle. Like where right in the you nuts. need to kick somebody. Exactly. Yeah. And of course, natural reaction. Oh, and uh-huh. I, I booked it. I left my cheer bag. I left everything there. Yeah, I booked I it to, to the school. I was like, oh my I gosh, I just got home. And I was just, I don't think I've ever ran oh, so that's much. so scary. But um, I feel like ever since then, my self-awareness and yeah. everything like that has yeah. high enough. It, well, and it's legit too. Because mm-hmm. like I was in uh, Central California until my junior year of high school. Like, you know not to make extended eye contact. And you know how to keep yourself aware in situations because they can go south really quick. I think that's something a lot of people in rural mm-hmm. America kind of never really get to appreciate is how you've got to keep yourself almost prepared for attack at any moment so that you can react or react, right? Exactly. Um, and then so moving forward from there, I've always had that just natural just instinct and I guess instinct inside. Um so graduated Phoenix, all that fun stuff. And then after that, my mom moved back to Arkansas. Um, and then from there, I went to California. Mm-hmm. So my sister was out there and she was like, just come to California, like mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. We'll have so much fun. So I moved over there to California and to LA in 2016. And I got the job that I wanted. Nice. So it was it was a lot of fun. I did in between that time, I did a little bit back and forth and I worked at an eye clinic over here and I was like, Oh, I love this. I love the medical field. And so I'm gonna go into that. And I worked at JB Hunt before. Um, and I was like, oh, I think I like the medical field better. Mm-hmm. So then um I got a really awesome job at a surgery center over there by one of the world famous um eye just eye surgeons over there. Okay. Um, and so I was doing very, very well and I got into nursing school 2017, and wow. I um, actually my entrance exam was a 97. percent Wow! So, so that's, and, and that's a highly competitive uh, area mm-hmm. of schooling to get into. It so is. Congratulations! Yeah, I was at West Coast University, and so it was. I was really excited because I'm like, dang, I'm a good guesser then. Mm-hmm. Shoot. <laughs> God was on my side mm-hmm, that day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was writing. He was filling yes. in the answers. Yes. Um. So, well, moving forward from there. Um, two years later, COVID happened. Mm. And at this point I I had already was, I was pregnant with my daughter. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I had to drop out of nursing school just Mm -hmm. because it's too much of a liability. You can't go into the hospital, all that stuff. So they say, just wait. I ended up just dropping out, unfortunately. So I was halfway done. Um, and then COVID happened Mm -hmm. and COVID in LA was just a whole insane game and by itself. You had a curfew, you had a curfew at 9 PM. Um, you couldn't be out and about or anything like that. You had to wear a mask. All your doctor's appointments were by yourself, mm-hmm. which now looking back at it, thank God I was by myself. Um, so, um, but yeah, and then after I had her, then um, I was just in a very bad situation. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so, give you in perspective, I was 210 pounds clocking into the hospital. What? Yeah. That's crazy to yeah. me. Yeah. So, I was 210. Um, and then in 10 months, I was down to 105. Wow. So that just was puts, that healthy weight loss? No. Okay. No. Because that seemed quite, <laughs> like quite a bit, such a short amount of time. Oh, yeah. Um, so overall, and then from there, you know, just the whole wasn't allowed to work, wasn't allowed to do this, XYZ, yeah. if you know, you know. Um, and so there was just at one point I said, I have to get out. I have to leave. And at this point it's, it's, it's hard because you want to make it work with your family, Mm -hmm. but then also you have to think about, okay, well, if it, if I make it work, I'm not going to be here. Mm -hmm. And even the police officer at that time, she said, listen, if you stay here, you're only going to have like a month to live. So I'm very grateful that I'm here today and with you. Mm -hmm. Um, because if you would have told me two years ago, I would have not believed you. Mm -hmm. I would have not like, I wouldn't have even thought that I would I would be here, honestly. Well, and the miracle of it all, um, I, mean, I guess one of the many miracles of it all is I never would have guessed that you mm-hmm. were carrying that story five months ago when I met you. And so five months ago, you were just a year and a half out of all of this, mm-hmm. right? Um, there's There's been an incredible restoration in your life. Um, what do you attribute that restoration to? I feel like a lot of it has to. So I went through extensive therapy. Um Three times a week, sometimes Mm -hmm. four. Mm. Um, Also, I was working, but I think just being away from 
that in toxic environment mm-hmm. and being with my family. Mm-hmm. Um, but also just looking at my daughter every single day and her telling me, I love you, mom. I oh. love. And so I think to myself, okay, I have to, I'm going to be better. I'm going to do yeah. better. Obviously I've made some mistakes in my life. Um, but life is, you know, I still have a long way to go. Yeah. Knock on wood. Um, but it, it's just, it's one of those things where, you know, you have two ways to live life. If you want to be a burden and carry that burden with you every single day, or do you want to wake up with a new opportunity? Come on. So, I mean, there's one thing that it's just changing your habits. Yeah. Little by little. If you say, you know, what, I want to change. I, I want to do this. I want to change. And, you know, and if you're trying to change, but still doing those same habits, mm-hmm. you're not going to see the results. Mm-hmm. Change is uncomfortable and it is lonely. It, yeah. let me tell you, it is lonely as heck. Your yeah. friends are going to be, you can have the dearest friends, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, a lot of the times they don't want to hear your your things and the depressing stuff and all that. Because there's nothing really in their willpower that they can do. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, and I heard a, pr- a promo the other day. I can't remember. I was trying to just sit here and think if it was on the radio or TV. But I just remember the message that said, you know, life is hard. Mm-hmm. You get to choose which hard that you're going to subscribe to because being overweight mm-hmm. is hard, but staying in shape is hard too. Mm-hmm. So you just have to, you know, and, and there were several diads that were set up in this advertisement or uh, public service announcement, but none of us get the benefit of a free life, right? No. Like even, even I, I grew up in, in a home full of addiction and I felt like most of the time uh, my parents' house was was full of people who felt like they should have got a better break or felt like life should have been easier. Um, but life isn't easy for any of mm-hmm. us, right? And so you have to choose your heart. And it seems like you, you realize, hey, you know what? I could have chosen one path with my daughter. I could have chosen this other path with my daughter. I'm choosing a path that gives her a strong professional mother to look up to that she knows loves her. Yes. And and I think that's super. Thank you. And so it's just one of those things where you have to really, I feel like in those times, you have to be selfish. Yeah. You have to put yourself first and take care of yourself. I hope you're taking notes out there. (laughs) You have to take care of yourself firstly. Yeah. You can't be a good parent. You can't be a good employee. You can't be good at anything unless you don't take care of yourself. Mentally, physically, say that you are dealing, dealing with something. Yeah. Get a journal. There right. are so many things of um, that people are dealing with that just they don't know how to cope with, yeah. with you know, with the emotion or with that, with that, you know, with what they're going through. And so it turns into addiction. It turns into drinking. It turns yeah. into this. It turns into that. And honestly, doing the hard work of in yourself, like I said, it is hard. Mm-hmm. So if you really want to change, you're gonna actually want to have to do it. Yeah, and not give up because. Let me tell you, it it is, it's rough out here. Yeah, <laughs> it's, tell you it what. Is, it's rough but good. It's it's good. Well, it's and good. I bet the people that you love are really happy for you. You know, um, mm-hmm. and I know that you, based on the story you shared, um, just to kind of jump onto mm-hmm. what you said a moment ago. Um, once you start telling, once once you start saying no to the people that you've been giving unhealthy or mm-hmm. inappropriate yeses to. Mm-hmm. They don't just encourage you and be like, hey, you know what? I understand you need to change yeah. your life. You're going to get some blowback from that. So you have to also know your boundaries. Mm-hmm. Know when to say no. It's okay to say no. Yeah. And I felt like for me. Under any circumstances. Under work, under person, yeah. anything, anything. Because you're going to get burnt out yeah. and you're not going to want to do anything at all. Mm-hmm. And you're going to have this, this kind of bitter attitude like, oh, my gosh. And um so basically, I mean, it's also respecting your boundaries and knowing your worth. Yeah. You know, knowing your your limits. Yeah. Whether or not that is at work, whether or not that is at home or, you know, it's and it's so hard for people, I feel like, and especially for myself, because I dealt with that and I currently still do. Mm-hmm. And I remember my interview, they asked me, what is what's your greatest um, what's your weakness? And I said, I can't say no, mm. which would that implies to. If anybody asks me for something, I'll say, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. You know, yeah. and that also has to do with going back to my childhood mm-hmm. is if I do this, I'll be accepted. If I do that, I'll be accepted. Yeah. And I fought so hard, even till this day, 
to be accepted mm. of who I am and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And I'm scared to say no, because mm-hmm. if I say no, well, then they're going to say, what, what are they going to, I'm worried about what they're going to say about mm-hmm. me, right? you know? And it's until, you know, you put in the work and you learn how to properly communicate to that saying, hey, I would really love to help you on this. However, I am completely swamped. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Whoever the person is, they may or may not get their buds or the feelings hurt, but guess what? So on. Mm-hmm. That's your. This is your life, not yeah. not theirs. Well, and I firmly believe and no is a gift, right? If somebody mm-hmm. asks you for help and you don't have enough time to give them your very best, all you're going to be able to give is a mediocre version, and they're asking for your best. That's why they're asking for your help. Or you're giving them the best help and your work is being mediocre. Oh, there you go. Susanna, yes. you've opened up a whole new can of worms yes. there. We've run out of time here. Listen, if people want to follow what's going on with the Rogers Lowell Chamber, they just want to learn more about you. Of course, yeah. How can they find you on, on socials? What websites do they need to know? Go ahead and tell them. So um, you can find or so our Rogers Lowell. Uh, dot com and we have destinationrogers.com as well which is an amazing tourist playable um and then also crc um crc underscore rlc which is our networking event that we run every single week um every wednesday at the golden corral at 9 a.m and then also every friday at the golden corral at 9 a.m it's a lot of fun that's why I'm it's a you. great it's a great time and if you're one of those people who know you need to network and you're just not sure how to get started or maybe you're like me and you were scared to get started that golden corral 9 a.m every wednesday is a super easy on ramp to networking. and i will say it is a little bit scary so it's a 60 second pitch you just come up say who you are hand out your business cards um a good referral for you how to get a con- and how to get in contact with you um it is a little bit scary so if it is your first time and you're like oh, i don't know if i want to do that you can sit down and listen to everyone uh just make sure you give me your card because obviously I, I need your contact information <laughs> i need to know who comes in mm-hmm. um but also i mean i'm willing to talk to you right after and just to answer any questions and then kind of give you a little bit of a script of what to say. Cause yeah. I know public speaking is, is hard it and is. it's tough. It it's is. tough. And I it's, still mess up on I'm, people's name. I still mess up on. I'm sorry. But I'll tell so. you just because I'm a, I'm a public <laughs> speaking coach too, right? I've got a master's mm-hmm. degree in, in making great speeches at a different point in my life. Um, after about 15 seconds, the, the fear that you're feeling is adrenaline that's being produced in your spine, and it's being shot off like crazy. After 15 seconds, mm-hmm. that adrenaline peaks, and it's all downhill from there. Yep. Well, I'll, totally off topic really quick. Um, so my old director at T-Mobile, he told me um, that he did some, he was doing some research, and he says, if you put this in your mind before, or if you say this out loud right before, you're, the experience is going to be a lot more better. So, yeah. for example... I am so excited to network. I am so excited to meet people. Yeah. I am ready to network. Yeah. I am so excited to talk to people. Why? Man- law of attraction, manifestation. It- I was reading on the law of attraction yesterday. Mm-hmm. Like what you think is more powerful than what is. What right? you speak. What you speak. So there's power in the spoken word. Mm-hmm. Okay, there you go. So if you say, oh my God, I'm going to have a crappy day. Well, guess uh-huh. what? You are going to have a crappy day. Yeah. Self fulfilling, and you only prophecy. get one life. So yeah. why make it crappy? That's make it, it make it the best. There are so many people out there that have it much worse than us. But also, you never know when your last day is going to be here. That's it. You're not so, promised five more minutes. So mm-mm. take advantage of it. Exactly. Right? Oh. Um, but you can also find me on LinkedIn, um, Susanna Silva, or also on so the Chambers website, RogersLaw.com. All of our events are going to be RogersLaw.com uh, forward slash events. Um, and if you have any other comments or anything like that, my personal or my email address is Susanna, S-U-S-A-N-A, at RogersLaw.com. Um, and yeah, if you want to connect or anything like that, feel free to... She's charming. She's friendly. She's a great representative for the Rogers Lowell Chamber. And if you want to meet Susanna and haven't, man, just show up at CRC on mm-hmm. Wednesday morning at 9 o'clock. Um, they, they serve us uh, coffee or soft mm-hmm. drinks, and and some people even grab a light breakfast. I don't know if they're supposed to or not, but they do. They do. It's it's out there for them. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, Shane, th- I mean, Golden Crawl is such—they do so much for the community yeah. also. They are—it's insane how much they do the— f- 
do for the community. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's light breakfast and stuff like that. And also November 9th, we are having a Mamacita y Mimosa luncheon um, with Hustle and Heels. So our Hustle and Heels is our all women empowerment group uh, run by Skylar and Steve. Um, but mainly Skylar. And she, uh, we decided to come up with the luncheon of a panel of five for five, which meaning that there's going to be five Latinas um, getting five minutes to tell their story um, and pretty much how they overcome any type of roadblock that they've had and how, you know, how they're basically their story on how they got here. And so tickets are $25. You can email Skylar at Skylar at rogerslow.com for more information um or we'll put the links down below also but it's also my birthday Yay! so you gotta so, come celebrate yeah. um and i'll be one of the speakers too um and so i'll be sharing a little bit more of a inspirational slash intense type of yeah. self-love yeah type thing going um, a little deeper going a little deeper yeah like adele yeah and <laughs> Yeah, well, and deep. you've invited <gasps> Business Radio X to be yes. a media partner with that mm-hmm. event. So my hope is that we can get all five of you on a podcast and yeah. maybe uh, maybe even uh, share the talks that you share. I don't know what we can do. We've still got to collaborate and find out we what do. that partnership looks like. But we are excited to be a part of that event. It's going to be great. We got to sign off and get out of here because you yes. and I keep going back into more. It's like that I Sunday know. morning preacher that keeps saying, in conclusion, and then we go 10 more minutes. Well, it's like Sunday morning coffee. There you go. The cheese is real. Boom. Just kidding. <laughs> I don't know what that is either. That hey, means the, what is it? The, it's like cheese is like uh, gossip, like the, uh, yeah. Okay. So. Guys, you have been watching a wonderful episode of Northwest Arkansas Business Radio. This is Susanna Silva. She is awesome. Make sure that you get out there to Roger. Say hi. Introduce yourself and talk to her as to how she can help your business grow. I'm even going to say flourish just because you're a hard worker. You put it out there. Thank you. I, I'll, I feel like I call myself the business matchmaker. Uh Just because I love to connect people together. So whenever I meet a business owner, I have that. I have somebody else in the back of my mind like, oh, wait, I remember three months ago, this person was looking for this. Okay. And then I'll go back to this person and say, hey, guess who I just ran into? Guess who I just, you know, met? You're a connector. I'm a connector. I don't draw the picture. I just connect the dots. Y'all, if she hasn't made the case by now, then then I don't guess the, the road on your car runs through uh, Rogers Lowell. But anyway, if it does, make sure that you go see Susanna. My name is Adam Robison. You've been listening to another episode of Northwest Arkansas Business Radio right here on Business Radio X. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys. <laughs>